Hello everybody, welcome to our sixth video in our series on Ramsey theory, and today I'd like to prove Schur's theorem. Now Schur's theorem states that for every k greater than or equal to 2, there will exist an n greater than 3, such that given any k coloring on the first n positive integers, then we will be guaranteed to find a monochromatic x, y, and z, such that x plus y equals z. Okay, so before we begin uh, proving anything, I want to sort of develop a little bit of intuition. So when k is 2, uh, are we able to actually find um, an n? Okay, so uh, the statement of the theorem states that n is going to be greater than 3. So let's consider the first four positive integers. Now, um, it is... It, you know, given any arbitrary two coloring on the first four positive integers, are we always guaranteed a monochromatic x, y, and z, uh, such that x plus y equals z? Or um, will we be able to find a two coloring on the first four positive integers where that property fails? So let's try and make it fail. So let's consider, um, okay, so, so the first thing is, uh, you know, one is going to uh, be colored either red or blue. So without loss of generality, let's color one red. Okay, so if one is red, we immediately see that blue needs to be blue, uh, two needs to be blue. And that's because, uh, you know, given that one is red, we have one plus one equals two. So if two is also red, then we'd have monochromatic x, y, and z. Now it's, at this point, we should note that, um, that x and y are not necessarily distinct. So uh, because one is red, we want two to be colored blue. And now we can look at four, because two plus two equals four. And if two is blue, then four can't also be blue. So we'll color four red. And at this point, uh, all we have left to color is three. Well, 3 can't be red because 1 plus 3 is 4, and 1 and 4 are both red. So what if it was blue? Well, if it was blue, 1 plus 3 is 4, that's okay. And if it was blue, 1 plus 2 is uh, 3, you know, and, and, and none of those are monochromatic. So if we color this blue, it's indeed the case that there does exist a 2 coloring on the first four positive integers, where we don't have monochromatic x, y, and z. So this property fails when n is 4. But uh, what, what, about, what about if n was 5? So if we, had, if we considered the first five positive integers. OK, so we'll start, the, we'll start similar to uh, last time. 1 has to be either red or blue. So without loss of generality, we'll say that 1 is red. Okay, and just like last time, because one is red and one plus one is two, well, we don't want uh, we don't want that to be monochromatic. So two is going to need to be blue. And then um, again, two plus two is four, and two is blue. So four can't also be blue. We'll color four red. And now uh, five, one plus four is five, and one and four are both red. So uh, 5 is going to need to be colored blue. And now all that remains is 3. Now 3 can't be red because 1 plus 3 is 4. That would be monochromatic. But it can't also be, it, but, but at the same time, 3 can't be blue because 2 plus 3 is 5. And then we'd have those monochromatic. But 3 does need to be assigned one of the two colors. But no matter what we choose, to color uh, three, we will be guaranteed a monochromatic x, y, and z such that x plus y equals z. And so therefore, when k equals two, um, our n, uh, one possible n is five. Okay, now that we've shown that we can find an n when we're only using two colors, I wanna consider if we're ar using an arbitrary number of colors, you know, an arbitrary k coloring. You know, are we guaranteed to be able to find a finite n such that 
any K coloring on those first N positive integers, we're going to be guaranteed to find X, Y, and Z monochromatic. Okay, so I want to define N as being R333 and so forth. And there's K3s. And uh, from a previous video, we know that this Ramsey number is indeed a finite number. Okay, so our claim is that given an arbitrary K coloring, on the first n positive integers, we're going to be guaranteed to find a monochromatic x, y, z, such that x plus y equals z. Okay, now to, uh, to kind of uh, think about this k coloring, we can think of this k coloring as being a function. So our function takes on the first n positive integers, and it maps them to one of k colors. So here's our first n positive integers, and then we have, uh, you know, and each integer over here is getting mapped to one of our k colors. So one might uh, be assigned blue, two might get assigned red, and so forth. Okay, so this function is going to come in handy uh, momentarily, but keep it in the back of your mind for now. So we have this function, and now I want to consider um, the complete graph on n vertices. So I want to consider kn, and as usual, we'll arrange our vertices cyclically. All the way around. And um, I want to kind of label these vertices. So we have vertex 1 here, vertex 2, you know, 3, 4, 5, all the way around until we get to n. So we have n vertices. And now um, we want to color uh, this complete graph um, with k colors. Now we have a little bit of a dilemma. So imagine that you know this is the ith vertex. You know, over here we have the jth vertex. How do we know what color to make this edge? So to make things simple, I'm going to assume that i is less than j. So I'm assuming that i is less than j. And we have, using this function, a convenient way to color this edge. Now I'm going to say this edge can be colored as chi j minus i. So j minus i, that is indeed an element somewhere in the set. And that particular element has been assigned a color. That's what color I want this edge to be. Okay, so we have chi j minus i. And so in that way, we've colored, using k colors, every edge in this graph. Now, recall that this is a complete graph on n vertices. And n was defined as r3333 and so forth, k3s. And what that means is that given any k coloring on this graph, we're going to be guaranteed to find a monochromatic triangle between any three vertices, you know, in one of those k colors. Okay, so let's assume that we, uh, you know, we have found our monochromatic triangle, and that triangle exists between the i vertex, the j -th vertex, and uh, we'll say the k -th vertex. And this k is not the same as like the k coloring. You know, this is just a dummy variable for you know this is the k vertex. Okay, so we have a monochromatic triangle between these. And um, so, how can we express that in terms of our function? So, um, chi j minus i. That's going to be the color on this edge between i and j. And now, similarly, we can express, you know, this, this color is going to be the same as chi um, k minus j. So I'm also kind of assuming that i is less than j is less than k, just to make things simple and we don't have to worry about absolute values and stuff. So the coloring on this edge is equal to the coloring on this edge is equal to the coloring on this edge, k minus i. 
Okay, so all this, all this expression is saying is that the edge colors are equal. And now recognize that um, j minus i, k minus j, and k minus i, all these values are elements in this setup here. So it's, it, they're, 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 they're contained somewhere uh, within our set of positive integers 1 through n. So in particular, I want to call this element j minus i. I'm going to let that uh, be x. So x is defined as j minus i. Similarly, uh, this element, k minus j, I'm going to define that to be y. So y is defined to be uh, k minus j. And then lastly, this element, k minus i, I'm going to define this to be z. So z is uh, k minus i. OK, now what happens if we add, add x and y together? So if we add x and y, uh, we have a j here and a negative j here. So those will cancel. Then we're left with k minus i. So x plus y equals k minus i. x plus y is k minus i. And k minus i has been defined as z. So it's been defined as z. This is definition. Now look what we have. x plus y equals z. We know that the coloring on x is equal to the coloring on y is equal to the coloring on z. Therefore, given any k coloring on the first n positive integers, we're guaranteed to find x, y, and z all the same color with the property that x plus y equals z. And that, that, has, that proves Scherr's theorem. Now it's important to note that this n, you know, that we've defined to be this Ramsey number, r33333, this n is not necessarily the smallest n with this property, but it does show that um, this, there, there will exist a smallest n. You know, for any k coloring, there will always be, you know, an n where this property holds. That finishes the proof.